It is in the nature of the human mind to search for patterns, even when coincidence could be a perfect explanation. Pareidolia, the tendency to see faces or animals everywhere you look, is a form of clustering illusion. One of the most famous pareidolias is probably this old Swedish photo from the 19th century, where many people obviously see the face of Jesus. But I can give you countless other examples of pareidolia. Just type the word in any search engine and I have some fun. Here is one with cardboards, for instance. Now, what about data? There is no reason why this tendency to look for patterns should disappear when interpreting data. One of the best examples I have seen while preparing this video was actually on Wikipedia, and I must thank the author of that GIF, GIF that is pretty useful to explain the concept. So the idea is the following. We are adding points randomly on this plot. So the next points could be added anywhere. There's no pattern whatsoever. And what appears randomly over time? Well, small clusters. Look this one or this one. You see, even random distributions can lead to cluster. So when you see such kind of pattern, do not necessarily assume that there's a non-random phenomenon going on. Of course, it depends upon the kind of data that you're looking at. If you're looking at a pandemic, like the coronavirus one for that matter, and you observe a cluster of people in the same district, it is possible that they are linked somehow, that they went to the same bar or the same shop, for instance, which in this case wouldn't be random. But randomness should never be excluded, and you always have to keep in mind that you have a tendency for, um, to search for patterns. Indeed, they could all have caught the virus abroad in different countries and happen to live in the same district or the same building. It could be random. So even if it's unlikely, it is possible. So streaks and clusters are always appear in small samples and in random distributions. Don't let this tendency of your mind fool you. For instance, at the casino of the roulette. Now that you know a bit more about your cognitive biases, don't you dare bet all your saving on the red because the red seems to be on a winning streak. That would be a perfect example of the gambler's fallacy, the hot hand fallacy, and is a formal probabilistic fallacy. But you already know that, I suppose. And such mistakes could cost you dearly.